Hello community, so great that you are back. We have a new paper by Stanford University and UC Berkeley and it is all about science and a deep scholar AI system that is brand new. Now, you know, we have open source research system, no? They do a research and synthesize known facts and new findings. And you are familiar with this, no? For example, here, open scholar, this is here the paper. Or if you go for another open source, this is here storm. Or maybe you are familiar with deep research from April 2025. So we do have open systems. But of course, it's interesting. How do they compare to the commercial system? Let's say OpenAI deep research. Or we have brand new search AIs where you remember MCP and here multi-agent system. So how do they compare here to multi-agent search AI systems in, let's say you do a research on the internet. Now, for those, we have now the study where they compare Llama 4 as cow to GPT 4.1 and O3 and Opus 4 by Claude and a Gemini 2.5 Pro. And if you ask me why not some other models, those are the set of models Stanford and UC Berkeley decided to perform their tests on. This is it. The framework they used here is here Open Deep Search, the search with open source reasoning agents. And you remember, we have your multi-agent system. We have an open reasoning agent here itself that interprets here the given human task and completes it here by orchestrating a sequence of action. And one of those actions might include here calling tools. And one of those tools that is available to this agent is here, the open search tool to connect to the internet and everything. So a multi-agent search utility. And now we have a new paper, we have a new method, we have some new research benchmark results and some new ideas. So what is the task that we are looking at? Let's say you're a researcher and you have your title and maybe you have already an idea from a technical abstract. No? And then you want to ask AI to write here the related work section of your publication for you. In the old times, we call this a literature review. Have a look who published what in your particular specific domain, when it was published, what were the topics, how was it related to your work. Now everything should be done by the AI. Now this new system is called the Deep Scholar Benchmark. And yes, it promises to generate here the deep, the related work section, the deep research on internet, on archive, on meta archive for you. So what it needs, three capabilities, you are looking for the retrieval. So you want to have a vast corpus, the live internet or the live archive, whatever you have. Then you want to have a synthesis report. So everything, all the data that were replied here from multiple sources, weave them to gather the findings into a coherent long form narrative. And then you want, and this is the most important constraint, absolute verifiability. So whatever you are claiming here and whatever you are citing, those must really exist. So the citing sources must be accurate on every claim and must be tra back, traced back to its origin. You must have references. Great. So the authors here, Stanford and UC Berkeley, built here an automated data pipeline directly. And they said, you know what, we not just for the internet, let's go here for science, let's go to archive. So we want to have a fresh data set <laughs> retrieved absolutely fresh here daily or um, every minute here from archive. So how we do this? So three topics, the recency, the quality control and diversity. And here they also limited themselves to computer science as a topic. And they made sure that they have a diverse topic with 18 different domains in computer science. So yeah, we are restricted to computer science, but I think you will see the results, they speak for themselves. Here's the paper, published today, August 27, 2025, Deep Scholar Bench, Live Benchmark on Automated Evaluation for Generative Research Systems from Stanford University in UC Berkeley. And the beauty is not that they have now a new benchmark, but what the new benchmark shows us. It shows us the true difficulty AI systems have if they do have to do a research synthesis. Here's the result. I would say, wait a minute, explain here at first the metric and the benchmark methodology. Okay. So they decided to go here for a three-dimensional differentiation. They said, we look for the knowledge synthesis of this new system. 
for the retrieval quality, it's more or less a rack system, no? And then for the verifiability, because we are working in science with archive, it must be really that we can cite real sources and there's no hallucination. Great. And then you can see even in those three dimensions, they decided to go with two or three sub indicators. So let's have a look. So for the knowledge synthesis or what I call, hey, how well is this generated AI text written? Is it informative? They have two indicators. The organization where an LLM as a judge performs here a pairwise comparison. And then they have here a metric that assesses here the informational completeness. So what you do, you have now from your text here a human written um, segment here. And this is automatically, if you want, chucked up here by the AI. So you get single sentences, for example, by the human. Like Redford et al. introduced here the transformer architecture, which relies here on a self-attention mechanism. Now, the AI might say, hey, this is a too long sentence. There are too many objects, too many subjects. I reduce this. I chunk it up here in nuggets. So the first nugget is Redford et al. introduced the transformer. Stop. This is it. So simple to verify. And then it goes on and you see exactly what's happening. No? You have then these essential nuggets and you want to make sure that those really represent here in the I generated text what is the main content of the human written sentence or paragraph or paper. Then second dimension, the retrieval quality. Simple in my words, did the I system find the right papers on archive for my topic? Here we have three indicators, the relevance rate, the reference coverage, or simply, hey, if the system found here the real important papers, and, you know, importance is just one, but we can also measure here how impactful this is with an impact um, quote. So we have a document importance metric. So this is a proxy for retrieving impactful word that uses here the citation counts from a specific API. Great. And finally, the most important for me, we have to have verifiability. So whatever we claim, there is a check against some other published work. So are the claims now actually supported here by the citation? And here they go with two indicators, the citation precision, where they say, hey, does the cited source support at least one claim made in the I sentence? Just one. And then they are say, hey, let's, let's go full power now. Now for the term claim coverage, we want do the cited sources support all the claims made in the I sentence. So it's really every little detail that the AI writes out here, supported here by, let's say, archive references. Great. Then they decided, you know, so we have now the idea of the benchmark, we have the metric and the sub-indicator of the benchmark, and they say, you know what, now we build a vehicle, so we can switch now the engine of this vehicle. So we can put in either a GPT 4.1, or we can put in a GPT 4 Omni, or we go with a Claude model as the engine, and they built here the Deep Scholar base. Now this was interesting because, remember I told you this is here almost here a rack system, no? They went here with a classical rack multi-agent multi structure. So at first, you have the query generation. So an LLM generates now a set of diverse search query based on the human input. So whatever I have, the AI, the LLM tells me, hey, that was a little bit too complicated. I generate now a set of diverse search queries and then I send this up. So those queries now, AI generated queries now run against the search API in our example, archive. And then we have a filtering, now a semantic filtering. And now we use another LLM is used to filter here to retrieve documents and anything that is irrelevant, we just want to ignore this. No? But we have still a lot of documents, like say 200 documents left now after the filtering. So we have to do a re-ranking because we want to go down to the top 20. No? So we have another LLM based step that now re-ranks in detail to the only 200 remaining documents. And it's a new prioritization here. What are the most relevant only of these 200? And then if we have the top 20, we want to have a semantic aggregation of the content of all 20 papers. No? So we say now the final top 20 documents are fed now as a context to an LLM. And again, you can choose your LLM that you like with a detailed prompt and then synthesization. And the LLM writes it a final related works action. So 
clearly structured data processing pipeline and you can switch on and off any LLM in any place that you want. And they tested here a variation of different LLMs and they say, so what are now the best performance combination? So you see, pipeline performing research synthesis is great. They run this here with a GPT-4 as their default and then they exchange and said, hey, what happens if I add here, let's say an O3 or a cloud model to GPT-4.1? All the prompts for this single steps that you just noticed here, you have here in detail in the annex here of the documentation of this new research paper. Like here, I show you the revised ODS React agent prompt here for calling here a tool. So a lot of additional data. I just want to give you the result. This is it. Again, you see one, two, three dimension, and then all the different sub indicator in this dimension. Yeah, I think we can forget about the open source research system from 2014. Guess what? Not up to challenge anymore. Let's look at a commercial system before we go to the pure search AI. Commercial system is they tested here one. And they said this is kind of one of the best open AI deep research. And if you look at the knowledge synthesis, wow, this is really impressive here. Dot eight five. I give you here my summary. OpenAI is really here the leader in crafting a well-structured and seemingly comprehensive narrative. OpenAI Deep Research really excels in the synthesis and in the retrieval task. And we have here the numerical data for the highest organization score, dot eight five, and the highest nugget coverage, dot three nine. Output are well-organized and capture here really the essential fact better than the competitors can perform. And for the retrieval quality, also the winner here, if you look here at the relevance rate, dot six two, covers the most important human cited reference with a reference covers of dot one eight and finds the most impactful paper, dot one. But, and this is now a big but, the performance of OpenAI Deep Research collapses in the third dimension, and this is the most crucial aspect if you have some scientific writing, trust and verifiability. If you just write something that is not verifiable, yeah, great. So, verifiability. Here, OpenAI Deep Research scores shockingly low. This is what Stanford and UC Berkeley tells us. Citation precision and numerical value is only .39, and the claim coverage is only .13. And they tell us this is one of the worst performers here. The, why is this happening? They suggest here a system optimized for fluent, plausible sounding text is great on the one hand. So it's excellent in synthesizing here a story or a storyline. But if you work in science, if you want to be absolute precise, you want to reduce hallucinating to the max, and you want to make sure making logical leaps that are not strictly supported by the cited sources of archive are not part of your document. Now, unfortunately, this is happening here with OpenAI Deep Research. So for purely scientific work, where you have to have absolute precision, this could turn out to be a fatal flaw. Now, interestingly, if we look at the new matter, the Deep Scholar Base, as I just showed you, and we put here an O3 as the engine into this benchmark, you see, interestingly, for the knowledge synthesis, we have the exact same benchmark, .857, .857. If we look here at the nugget, we even have a better performance here at the sequential tokenization, if you want. And, and this is now interesting, with this new method, look at the verifiability from dot one we jump to dot six so yeah wow this is an impressive improvement against the commercial open AI deep research performance so this new method by stanford and uc berkeley even if you use it with an open AI model you see in one of the indicators they are at least as good as the commercial models but they outperform the commercial model significantly in verifiability isn't this beautiful? And if you ask yourself, hey, why I have suddenly two LLMs, I told you you can have multiple LLMs here in the pipeline. 
So they decided for the SEM filter and the SEM top K data, they go with GPT 4.1. But for the heavy duty SEM, the aggregation step, they go here with an O3 or a Claude or a Gemini. Just to make sure we are on the same page. So this is the process. So we have the filter process, then the top K, the top 20 papers, and then the final aggregation, the final section generation. And I told you, I show you always the prompt. And here you have the prompt. So whatever LLM you choose, an O3 or a Claude Opus 4 or a Gemini 2.5 Pro, this is here the prompt for the aggregation, for the final aggregation here of your research. So now we can see the paper here. Highlights here the Deep Scholar base can achieve up to 6.3 times higher claim coverage. So one indicator in one dimension, six times three better than OpenAI Deep Research. Nice. So we do have new systems that really outperform the classical commercial black box systems. But on the other hand, if you want just a plausible, well-written draft and you are not in science, and you are willing, if you are in science, to meticulously fact check every single claim, every single half sentence that AI writes for you, then if you as a human do this verification and correct it, then OpenAI is really maybe also interesting. However, if you are a scientist and you say, I will go with the AI system that I can trust at least partially, then the Deep Scholar base here with Claude or Gemini model as the engine is dramatically superior if you look at the data from Stanford and UC Berkeley. The paper states also that no matter the chief CS score greater than 0.19 when you average across the metric. So this is not an incremental challenge, you know, go from 78% to 82%. No, we had 19%. This is the best model we have. So we have quite a monumental challenge in front of us to make our AI models better, more performance, more power. So there's a lot of work in front of us. And if you say, okay, I don't like here the numerical values in a table, I want to see this here in a visualization. Here you have exactly all the different elements here in a uh, yeah, to radar visualization, but this is exactly the data here from the numerical table I just showed you. But if you prefer to have it here in a radar, beautiful, here is it. I'm a little bit early, so they have not yet uploaded here the code here in the demonstration to GitHub. And here you have on GitHub the Gastrin Lab at Stanford University. Here you have your link. So whenever you should have a look, they should have uploaded here this new methodology already for the moment it is not available yet and there we have it a new research paper by stanford university uc berkeley about ai doing here the research the literature review here on brand new topics live in a multi-agent network deep scholar to research and synthesize knowledge and if you are in science this could be a real benefit a real help just a warning, you always have to check your resources. There's always a possibility, even with the best current AI systems, that the system is hallucinating. It is referencing to archive preprints that are non-existent, or it is coming up with an explanation that is logically incorrect. But otherwise, enjoy AI, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.